We're here with our second tutorial on some C-sharp tips and tricks here for Unity coding. This one's going to cover extensions and actions. We're going to kind of mix those together to come up with something that uh, hopefully will pique your interest and uh, give you some ideas for things in the future. So let's jump right into this. We have a project here. It's got a couple sounds and it has a button that does nothing. So we're pretty much starting from scratch. So let's switch over to Mono Develop and First off, what is an extension? Uh, extensions are, are actually pretty simple. They allow you to add new methods to existing classes. So th there's really um, nothing too special about them. Their uh, their big use is for uh, you know basically for convenience and reusing code. So every time I start up a new project, I dump seven or eight extension files in my project, and just like that, I have a good base to start with. So let's see how these things work. So we have a string extensions file right here. And whenever you're making an extension class, you'll always have public static class. So it has to be a static class. And I always name my extensions the class name that I'm extending plus the word extensions. Makes it really easy to catalog them, really easy to find them. I know everything in the string extensions class is going to be something, uh, an extension that I've added to string. So let's. Uh, Let's go ahead and do a quick example here. This is going to be uh, utterly useless, but uh, why not make it anyway, just to see how it works. So you always, because uh, we're in a static class, we're going to go ahead and make static method here. It's going to return nothing, so we'll call it void, and let's just call it print with lots of letters appended. Okay, so that gets us started. Now the first parameter in an extension method is very important. So this is going to be an um, odd looking syntax if you've never seen it before. But what you do is this, then the class name that you're extending, and remember we're making string extensions, and then the name of the parameter. So we'll call it the string right now. Could be anything though. So that's it. We have our first extension method written. Right now it does nothing, so let's just make it do something real quick. We'll make the most useless thing we could possibly think of. So it'll print with lots of letters appended. So let's append a bunch of letters. All right, so we've made a completely useless method. Let's go uh, do something with it. So we have a single button here, and it's uh, got the title string append, and it creates a string here. It just says, hi, I'm a string. So if we were to debug log this out, we can hop over to Unity and we have a nice little console tab here. So we hop in here, play this, and just as we'd expect, we got high on a string. Superb. So now let's see how, uh, how our little extension method works here. So Mono Develop actually is really good about this. It, it pulls in your extension methods. And you'll notice right here in autocomplete, on just a standard string, you're going to see that method we just created, which is print with lots of letters appended. Now, another thing you're going to notice here is it has no parameters. You can see it takes zero parameters. And that's because Mono Develop knows we are and the compiler knows we're, uh, we're performing this method on a string. So what it's going to do is it'll just automatically fill in the parameter for us based on this, which is the current class, string. So now we have the string dot print with lots of letters appended. Let's hop over to Unity, clear out our log, and let's take a look what happens when we do this. Okay, so just like we'd expect, we have I am a string with a bunch of... Uh, useless letters appended to it. By itself, that's a pretty useless method there, but if you think about your project and think about all the different things you can extend now, you could have a game object extensions class. And uh, you know, I personally have one that does animations, so I can literally just do game object dot move to and throw a vector three and it'll just handle everything in the background there. And uh, I also use um, all the time. I have an audio source extensions class in there. It lets you add a bunch of really handy functions to to these classes that already exist, and you can reuse these really easily. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to make our own audio extensions class. Here we're going to jump into our audio source extensions file here. And you can see we followed the same naming convention, called it audio source and then extensions. And uh, let's jump right in and make a, make a handy little method here. So public static, we always have to make sure we're doing public statics. And let's call it play clip. We're going to follow the same convention. You do this, keyword this, so that it knows uh, what class it's working with. We're going to do the actual class type and then what we want the parameter name to be. So we're going to take in an audio source and we'll take in an audio clip as well. Okay, so we want something that plays an audio clip here. So real simple, we're just going to set the clip to the audio clip we passed in and call audio source.play. So that's real simple. Doesn't uh, doesn't do too much, but again, we're we're starting here. We're going to start to add some methods that'll that'll make this extension class useful as time goes on. So let's add a new button. And uh, just so you can see this, uh, there is there is one thing happening here. We have uh, our audio source being grabbed using get component. For uh, those who are used to the Unity 1.7 syntax or the JavaScript syntax, this is a real convenient way to do it. This is uh, using generics, so you do uh, you just call it get component and then the component type, and it grabs it for you. So we're gonna add a new button in here. There we go. Okay. So this new button in here uses our audio source that we have up there, and all it's going to do is call play clip, and it's going to use the explosion clip. And you can see we have explosion, wind, and then an array of clips. So jumping back into Unity, let's go ahead and play this scene. We should have our new button. Yep, we still have string append here, and now we have our play explosion method. And it plays an explosion. Not much of a surprise. 